All right. If you've ever, you ever taken your time to study the law, all right, in, in relation to um, the, the different areas, you know, of life, you know, of the children of Israel, you will see that the kind of perspective, we talked about that earlier, so let me just, you know, just touch on that a little bit and move on. The kind of perspective that God, you see, that God, you know, gave to the children of Israel through the law was a perspective that brought every, you know, area of life or units of life into a single focus. You know, the law, in the law, you couldn't find in the law, you know, a, a, a segregation of life. That is why the giving of the law addressed every area of their lives. The same law, just one law. All right, now we talked about the fact that the law is not just 10 commandments, all right? The scripture lets us know that the law contains commandments, ordinances, um, statutes, you know, uh, and all of that, you know. And the, the giving of the law affected every area of their life. Now, actually, it is, um, it is actually ignorance that makes, you know, a lot of people to, you know, when they teach the law to think that um, the law that Moses received was just 10 commandments on tablet of stones. No, <laughs> it wasn't 10 commandments Moses received, you know, on tablet of stones, all right? It wasn't 10 commandments Moses received, all right, on tablet of stones, you know? Um, um, maybe that, that's in a different meeting now, but, you know, so the law, you, you would see Moses, you know, God speaking through Moses repeatedly, for example, in the book of Deuteronomy, telling them, if you were hearkening to my commandments, if you would do my, obey my laws, if you would obey or follow or hearken to the statutes and ordinances that I give to you this day. And when you go into the law and have a proper, you know, a proper grasp, you know, of the constitution of the law, you would see that it touched every area, touched the addressing, touched agriculture, touched, you know, health, touched every area. That, in turn, made it impossible for an average, you know, Jewish person in that time to have, to have, um, to have, um, 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 you know, as a matter of fact, that, that wouldn't have been possible because, you see, um, um, it, was not, it was not until the, you know, the, the invasion, you know, as it were, of the Grecian Empire. I'm sure you remember the vision, you know, of, um, is it the vision of Nebuchadnezzar that Daniel had to interpret, all right? Now, you know, about the statue, the huge statue, you know, the first head part, the chest, you know, to the loins, then the, the feet and, you know, and all of that. All right, we're not going to all of that now. Now, now we, we see that, you know, with the end of the Babylonian empire came the um, uh, Medo-Persian empire. Now with the end of the Medo-Persian empire came the Greek or the Grecian empire as it was called at the time, you know? so. Um, what is today referred to as, you know, the secular, you know, what is today understood as um, a difference that exists between spirituality and physicality, between, um, 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 in quotes, religiosity and secularity, you know, between in all of all of that, you know, actually came with the Grecian, it was at the root of the philosophy all right of the grecian empire you see and in the day and time that jesus was born in israel the israel jesus met had been broken down they had been you know thoroughly and completely you know enmeshed into the philosophies of the of the at that time of the roman empire because we know that the roman empire broke off out of the grecian the greek you know uh, um, uh, empire you know the roman rule came off of the greek empire you know 
So the ideologies, you know, had infiltrated the way of life. The only thing they had left was just, um, you know, <laughs> was just, um, you know, cultures, uh, religion that didn't, that, that lacked power, which was not powerful enough, you know, to deliver them. It wasn't powerful enough, you know, to give them a pedestal of excellence, you know, and, and, and glory. You see, hence why when Jesus came, Jesus began to take the truth of the kingdom. You see, he began to take the time to teach them, all right, the revelation of the kingdom. Now, listen, it was after Jesus taught that he would now say, repent. All right, repent. Now, the, the primary you know, uh, um, purpose of the phrase repent they has used by Jesus, all right, is to change your mind. You see, change your opinion about this matter. Now, but you see, you can't tell a person to change his mind or change his opinion if you haven't presented something better. You see, so Jesus did a good work of teaching. You know, the way, you know, the, way the Gospels, you know, were written, you know, particularly um, um, Matthew, Luke, and Mark, you know, the way they capture how that Jesus, from after that he had been baptized by John, went about from city to city, preaching, saying, repent for the kingdom of God is at hand. No, that was not what Jesus was doing. Jesus wasn't going about saying, repent for the kingdom. No, repent, repent unto what? <laughs> All right? You know, because, you know, when a lot of times, Christians think that is what it is because, you see, they don't have a background understanding of, um, of the cultures of the Jews. Because when you say repent, you know, first you need to even look at that word repent in the original language that it was used. All right? Basically, first, it means to return. But before you can tell a person to return, you have to tell the person to what? To return to what? Number two, repent means change your mind. So change my mind from, okay, from this to what? This was the reason why when you look at the book of Matthew very carefully, you will see the scripture says Jesus went from city to city, village to village, preaching, sorry, teaching, preaching, and healing the sick that was in those cities. This was the reason why Jesus took time in teaching. So it is somebody who has spent ample time teaching and preaching the way Jesus has done that has every right to now say repent. You understand what I'm saying? Somebody who has not laid, who has not, you know, laid the foundation, who has not captured the reality, has no right to tell you to repent. Because repent in the, you know, in the language of the people means change your mind. You see, return, change your opinion. Now, you can only have the right to do that. You can only say that if you have presented something better. So Jesus didn't just go saying, repent for the kingdom of God is at hand. Repent. You know the way some people now <laughs> even go as fast, you know, carrying out, carrying that out in today's world, you know, walking on the street, shouting, repent, repent for <laughs> the kingdom of God is at hand. The guy doesn't even know what the kingdom of God is. He doesn't know you are telling him to return to the kingdom. In the first place, he didn't even have a proud previous revelation of the kingdom of God. He's not a Jew. The Jew had a previous revelation of the kingdom of God, but of course, as made available to them in the law. You see, in the law. But the person out there who is not, you know, I think let me stop there. You know, I'm feeling like I'm teaching in a, a regular word conference. This is a business meeting. All right. Now, now what I'm trying to say is this. What I'm trying to say is this. You see, uh, the way the law was given, the way it was constructed, all right, and administered through the ministry of the angels was in a way that gave the Jews, the children of Israel, it gave them a singular perspective, a perspective with a laser focus. You see, a perspective like a laser beam that cut, cut through every area of life, that sees through every area of life, as a singular unit. Now, that was the reason why it was easy 
for the children of Israel to, to um, receive the intervention of God, all right? It was easy for them to expect, to expect the intervention of God in every, in quotes now, areas of their life. You see, it was easy for them to expect the divine, you know, intervention of God. That was why, you know, when you look at their fathers, long before the law was given, you know, God used, God used how he intervened, you know, as it were, in the lives of their fathers to, 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 to lay the foundation of that singular perspective that was given to them through the law. Because when they look, when they hear the stories of the father, their fathers, they saw how God intervened in every area of their lives. And they saw how their fathers had a, as it were, a supernatural, natural expectation, all right, for God to intervene. You see, they will look at such fathers as um, Jacob, and they will see an angel, they will hear stories of an angel appear to Jacob in a dream and discussing sheep and goats. Sheep and goat, for Jesus' sake. Sheep and goat with Jacob in a dream. How to, how to break biological law, natural law. You, do you understand? Do you, know, do you know what that is? Now, maybe you need to try tickling the mind of, the, of an average Christian today and see whether his mind is large enough to accept the fact that an angel can appear to him and discuss a contract with him. You'll be shocked that many Christians don't have a mind that can accept that. You'll be shocked if you ask some Christians, take up some Christians' mind by asking them to see whether they, they, their mind can accept an angel appearing to them, all right, or giving them insight. Let's even use as little as a dream. Giving them insight about, you know, an artwork. Do you, do you understand what I'm trying to say? But the children of Israel already have that background, you know, stories, background stories of, of God, you know, you, know, you know, sending his angels, you know, to cause water, water to break out of the ground in a desert region, water. What consigns angel and test? <laughs> Do you understand that? Water. An angel spoke to Haggai, and as soon as it was done, the scripture says, water broke out. The water wasn't there before. Even though the way the King James put it, he put it in a way that suggests that, you know, her eye wasn't open to the water before. Because the way the King James, you know, you know, you know, talked about that, is that, and her eyes were open. No, it wasn't natural opening of sight, as it were. It's not that she didn't see that there before. It was that that water, the issuing of that water broke out supernaturally. If it wasn't supernatural, then it didn't require the help of an angel. Angel don't show up to do what you can do. Angels don't get involved all right, in your life to take care of what you can take care of. That is why angel will never show up to wash your clothes, to do laundry for you. You should be able to do your laundry. Do you understand? Angel will show up and drive vehicle for you. All right? As long as you can drive. The Bible speaks of angels in Psalm 103, verse 20. It says, bless the Lord, he is angels. All right? That are mighty. First, it tells you that they are mighty in strength. They are mighty. So their mightiness in strength is not for doing natural human things. It's for doing things that require superhuman ability, superhuman effort. Superhuman effort. That is the stories the children of Israel have, you see, as a heritage. Hence why somebody like um, 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 Gideon could respond back to the angel Though at the time he didn't realize that it was an angel that had spoken to him. He said, if the Lord is with us, where are the miracles? <clears throat> so miracles are not natural things. 
They're not natural things. He said, where are the miracles that our fathers told us of? You see, now this was how many years after the law had been given? He said, where are the miracles that our fathers told us of? You see, So the children of Israel, as at the time that the law was given to them, they already have, you know, you know, backlog of stories. Stories of God intervening in every aspect of life, which was, you know, for them a foundation, you see, us, that also doubles as a witness, you know, a witness to the perspective imparted to them or given to them by the law, all right? A perspective that puts all area of life, all right, within the single layer, the single lesser, rather, all right, the lesser being, all right, given to them by the law. So it made it easy for them to expect, easy for them to expect. So the, the Jews of that time didn't understand what. They didn't understand what, you know, secular is. They didn't understand what, you know, you know, like what some Christians do today, you know, open a business and want to dedicate it to God. <laughs> they didn't understand what that is. You know, many of those religious things we do, say you need to dedicate the, the, the business to God. You need to, you understand? You know, it sounds very religious. Let's dedicate the office. You understand? <laughs> the way the law was given to the children of Israel, it made the children of Israel to understand that from before the business, was conceived as an idea, it was the Lord. To when it enters the heart as an idea, it's the Lord. To when it materializes into manifestation, it's still the Lord. So it doesn't need dedication. You know, here we, we are in the bit of being really, see, that's why, a lot of, that's why a lot of modern day Christians don't understand, in spite of our speaking in tongues, in spite of our boasting of being kingdom, in spite of our boast of being Pentecostal and being charismatic, we still don't realize how much the Greek thinking still waters down, reduces to almost nothing our spirituality. You see, because we do all of all those spiritual things. We want to, we want to, we buy a car, we dedicate it to the Lord. <laughs> you know, you know those kind of things. You know, you buy a car, <clears throat> you know, you want to call your pastor <clears throat> to come and dedicate it. You know those kind of things. You know, you build a new house, you want to call a pastor, you know, to come and dedicate it so that God can now begin to live in this house, you know. <laughs> you open a new office or you get a new branch. <laughs> you <laughs> now relax, relax. Now, don't get me wrong. I'm not saying there's anything wrong. I'm not saying there's anything wrong with um with <laughs> with praying over businesses, business initiatives, praying over a new house, you know, praying over. You know, there's nothing wrong, but you see, it's important to have the proper, proper mindset. You know, proper mindset. You know, it's important to have the proper mindset. You know, proper mindset. It's important. You know, the 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 there's so much blessing, you know, that comes in having a proper mindset. You know, it, the blessing is not in the prayer. You understand? Prayer should, you know should just buttress on existing, you know, you know, spiritual belief system. Prayer should further, you know, emphasize, further establish, all right, existing, you know, kingdom mindset, kingdom, you know, uh, way of thinking. You see, we're... <laughs> okay, okay. <clears throat> Someone is asking, what about child dedication? All right. <laughs> Do you know I was going to touch on that? I said, no, let me not look for trouble. Let me not look for trouble. David is a business meeting. Stay with the business. <laughs> all right. All right. Okay. Now. All right. Now, child dedications. All right. Should we look for this trouble? <laughs> okay. 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 But I'll touch on that 
all right, a little bit, <clears throat> but maybe more exhaustively in a in a meeting because I think I want to touch up, touch on it more comprehensively in a larger meeting so that everybody can more persons can benefit from because there's always there's been a whole lot of issue about child dedication, child dedication. Now listen very carefully. Now, uh, first of all. First of all, you have to you have to look at um, the practice of um, what you call um, the practice of bringing a child, you know, in the law. All right. In fact, before the law, before the law was given, God, all right, um, was the one that you know, as it were, instituted with Abraham what you call the circumcision in the flesh, right? I'm sure you know what circumcision in the flesh is. Now, at the time, in the day and time God instituted that with Abraham, all right, it was with, um, it was um, at the time when Abraham um, had gone in his own strength to, you know, um, give birth to Ishmael. Ishmael. So Ishmael was the child, right? Ishmael was the child in Abraham's house when God spoke to him about circumcision. You see, and now, now we're not going into so much details now, but you see, one of the reasons for the circumcision in the flesh, all right, was one of the reasons was for them to have a sign in their flesh, you see, of their of their of their, them belonging to God, of their belonging to God, or of them being possessions of God. You see, what the natural circumcision was a representation of, all right, number two, was of the salvation that was to come. It was a shadow of the salvation that was to come. You see, First of all, I said, first of all, it stood as a seal in the flesh, all right, of them, that's Abraham and every member of his household, all right, it stood as a seal of Abraham and every member of his household, all right, being possessions of God, belonging to God. It was one major way God, though in the flesh, separated them from the rest of the nations from the rest of the nations. You see, from the rest of the nations. So when Abraham received that instruction, now don't forget I said also number two, it also was what it is, it also was a significance or a representation rather of the salvation, the redemption that was to come. All right. That which they bore in their flesh became a witness of that which was to come. So you see, what that not did was that from that day going forward, all right, everyone who was a member of Abraham's household, because Bible said that Abraham did it for everyone, including the slaves, all right, everyone from that day now had, number one, they now had circumcision, they now had circumcision They now had circumcision in their flesh as a physical sign, all right, of being owned, being owned by God, of being owned by God. And number two, number two, it stood as a representation that they bore in their flesh of the salvation, all right, that was to come, which Abraham, all right, which Abraham had had preached to him by God. So in other words, it stood as a sign that put them in a position of constantly looking forward to, looking forward to the salvation which God had preached to Abraham. 
You see, the justification by faith which God had preached to Abraham. You see, now, <clears throat> by the time that the law was now given, by the time that the law was now given, all right, the practice of circumcision, all right, was also introduced. Now, don't forget, the practice of circumcision had continued to be carried out, all right, from Abraham to Isaac, from Isaac to Jacob, Jacob, the 12 sons, all right, the 12 sons, the 12 tribes, the nation of Israel. You see, they are continuing to do that. They are continuing to do that, all right? Whether or not they had the actual revelation that God gave to Abraham, they didn't, they, that was not even the case. It had now become a culture, you see? Up until the time Moses showed up, it had become a culture that lacked power, just like Jesus said, you know, you know uh, uh, when he talked about, uh, um, 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 oh, sorry, I was gonna say Paul, when Paul talked about um, um, a form of godliness, all right? that lacks power. You see, as at the time Moses showed up, they didn't even know the God of their fathers. Moses even had to ask God what his name was, you know, so that when Moses went back to them, Moses had to in, reintroduce God, the God of their fathers, to them. You see, now, by the time the law was given, all right, by the time the law was given, because you must also understand that with the giving of the law was also the setting up all right, of a culture for them because their culture had been lost, all right, while they were in slavery in Egypt. So with the coming of the law was also the constitution, all right, of a culture for them as a people, all right? Because a sense of being a people, all right, came to them when God gave them the law. All right, more detail about that later. Now, going forward, during the institution of the law, Moses, by God, began to give instruction, all right? Began to give instruction, all right, in regards to circumcision. The number of days, which was exactly the number of days that it, had been, it was first done, um, that God had told Abraham about, all right? Even though Abraham didn't do that because it, um, what's his name? Isaac was already 13 years old. Abraham was already a grown-up man. All the servants in his house were grown up. You know, when he, when he filed them, you understand, and rip, rip the foreskin, you know, of their, of their, you know, their, their genitals. You understand what I mean by that? Now, Moses came and told them, began to break it down, okay, eight days and all of that. Now, listen carefully. Now, this was what the children of Israel kept doing. Kept doing. It became a practice. So much so that even scripture lets us know that Jesus himself as a baby was brought in into the temple. Scripture says to do according to the custom. Are we here? According to the custom. Custom located where? In the law. Custom constituted by what? By the law. By the law. You see, now this law, which is the constitutional foundation for the custom, all right, all of it put together is what Jesus has become a fulfillment of. You see, so really, the believer today has no business, you know, giving birth to a baby and waiting till. 40 days you know you know this thing we do or you do <laughs> waiting for 40 days you say for that 40 days the woman must not show up in the in the company of saints you you deny the woman access to to fellowship you, you understand that because if you want to do the law why don't you go all the way i remember i was teasing a couple i was teasing a couple recently who got married um um you know, just shortly before the, or at the very beginning of the of the lockdown, before the lockdown took effect globally, you know, I was even present in the in the in the you know wedding ceremony. 
You know, and I was testing them. I said, you know what? I said, you are aware that in the law, all right, new couples were told to have honeymoon for one year. <laughs> one year. I said, you are going to have serious honeymoon. <laughs> one month passed, honeymoon continued. <laughs> no work resumption. Second month, third month. <clears throat> it's been how many months now? The dear lady just resumed work two weeks ago. <laughs> Is it two weeks ago? <clears throat> Excuse me. I think about a week ago. I think about a week ago. Just resumed work. She's looking all fresh. <laughs> all robust. You know, just doing, doing honeymoon for like how many months? That was like almost six months honeymoon. <laughs> Do you understand? You know, that was that provision was made available in the law. In fact, Moses went as far as telling them that that man should not even he should not even tend this field. The man should not tend this field. Say, so while he's on honeymoon, his kinsmen should make sure that his crops are doing well. If he's a if he's a, a man that has a if he's a shepherd. His sheep should be fed robust. <laughs> he shouldn't do anything. He should face his wife. You understand? Face her and take care of his wife for one year. It's in the law too. <clears throat> you see, someone said, I love that. <laughs> You're a spiritual man, my brother. But I guess you are not married yet. No, I'm not guessing. You are not married yet. That's why you. That's why you are loving that. <laughs> Don't worry. When you are ready to get married, there will be no lockdown. <laughs> Excuse me. You know. So you see. You know. All. So you see, the, the law, the, the, that, that's why when you look at James, look when you look at what James says, you know, in, in, in talking about the law, he said, any person who claims, oh, he, 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 he's going to live by the law, is going to be like by, by the law. He said, if he takes one, he said, if he, he said, if he, if he fulfills all and fails in one, he said, he's guilty of the law. He said, he's guilty of the law. He said, you want to live by the law? Go all the way. Go all the way. So really, really, now I understand that okay, when a woman, you know, gives birth, you know, she needs to rest. Yes, she needs to rest. She needs to, you know, recover. She needs to, she needs to, you know, you know, yes. As far as I'm concerned, the only thing she needs is rest. Staying back at home till she's fully bodily recovered has no spiritual implication whatsoever. Under the law, the only, you know, closest spiritual implication was in obedience to a culture informed by the law. It didn't improve anybody's spiritual growth. It doesn't improve nothing. 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 We've had, we've had babies named <laughs> five days after delivery, we named the boy. Five days. Five days after, not the usual eight days. Five days. All right. We, we had to do that, you know, to, to mess Satan. We were told that the baby was born with John. I said, what John? I told the father, go and bring the boy. Go and bring the boy. He got to the hospital. The doctors were saying, oh, no. You know, so he called me. I told him, bring your boy home. He's your son. He's your son. Bring your boy home. So the doctor had, I was telling him, so, so you mean, oh, he, he brought the boy home. Then he came home. He said, so, pastor, I said, call your family. Tell them, uh, is it tomorrow or the next day, which is five days after delivery. Is the name. He sent message. His siblings were quarreling and fighting. So when they came for the naming, they came in fuming. They came in fuming until I showed up and preached. By the time I was done preaching, all of their they were coming one by one to confess to me the wicked things they were saying against this is pastor. <laughs> Say no, they didn't know. Oh no, they did. See, that's that's the thing. A lot of people don't know a lot of things, not because they don't want to, they don't know, but because they do not study. They just, we pick up belief systems that we have not, you know, reinvestigated from scriptures. We just pick it up. We don't know why. Why is it like that? We just pick it up. You know, we just pick it up. 
You know, you understand that. We just speak it. I remember some years ago, I, I, I was, I was, um, sorry, the, the question, you know, I remember I was, um, I was on my way to a meeting in, um, you know, in the western part of um, 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 Nigeria, when I got a call from a family a minister, both husband and wife and ministers, called me and said that um, one of their member, I haven't been to their ministry before, but they said they got my number from the person whose meeting I was going to minister in, and said that one of their member's um, um, daughter had just passed on, that they would like for me to come and pray for the, ch for the child. Now, already I was already um, some, let's say about halfway, you know, gone on my trip. And this was very early because it was going to be an early morning session. I needed to be there very early. All right. I was already as far as early as um, 5.20, 5.30. I was already on the way. AM. So I told her, I said, okay, I, I'm already on my way. No, and you know, they were saying, no, they would. And I said, okay, let me get back to you. So I tried calling some of the brethren I knew who will probably have the time to go, who are not already on their way to work. And, and you know the way Lagos can be. Most every person in Lagos, that works in Lagos is already on their way to work that early. You know, so this one, oh, I'm already on my way to go. Oh, I'm, I'm already, oh, okay. I just thought of, okay. Meanwhile, at that time, there was a sister who had just given birth, all right? Who had just given birth. She was the only person I could think of after I called the rest. And I said, ah, that time, um, how you doing, my sister? I said, fine. I said, ah, hope you are good. He said, fine. I said, I have one small job for you. He said, ah, yeah. You know, because this same sister, one week after she gave me, wanted to start coming for meeting. <laughs> Her husband had to report her to me. I had to, I had to exert my authority over her as a shepherd. I said, you know what? Relax. Relax. You know. So when I called her and I told her, this word is on ground, this word is on ground. You know, what do you think? She was so excited, so thrilled. You, you, you understand that? The next thing I did was sent her the address. Before I could go get to where I was going to finish preaching. By afternoon, she had gone there, she had gone back home, excited, waiting for me to send another number. <laughs> a lady who was just, at that time, that was just barely like two weeks. You know, two weeks, thereabout. You know. So what I'm saying is, what I'm saying is this. As soon as a baby is born, as soon as a baby is born, name your baby. The baby can be named the same day. Or, wait, or maybe you, you probably just want them to be out of the hospital. Do the, what's it with eight days? The original purpose of the eight days within the culture made available by the constitution of the law was circumcision. You see, circumcision, all right? Which as it was given to them, all right, first was a representation in the flesh of being owned by God, of being owned by God. Number two, it was it stood as a representation of God's seal in the flesh. All right, it was a seal in the flesh, all right, of a future salvation that was to come. The salvation is here, my brothers and sisters. Are we here? You are the fruit of that salvation. In fact, you are that salvation, all right, working on two feet. You are that salvation manifested. So you have no business waiting till eight days, waiting for, an, for a period of eight days to name a child or to circumcise a child. You want to circumcise a child, seek out what is, you know, medically, you know, um, 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 obtainable. You know, is, is it eight days? Is the child ready to be circumcised in eight days? No problem. Is it 14 days? No problem. But there is no spiritual connection whatsoever again don't do that feeling very spiritual don't do that feeling that you have now obeyed the word you have fulfilled you have fulfilled, you have done something spiritually you know no don't do that don't do that you want to name the child don't worry if you are ready to name your child two days after his the child is born call me <laughs> who name the child who name the child glory to jesus forever all right all right you know so a lot of times <clears throat> people just pick up, you know, these kind of traditions and all of that, and, 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 you know, that have survived, survived, you know, isn't it interesting how you see all these traditions that, that are powerless, how they've been able to survive the different, you know, what is called moves of God, different, you understand that? That's to tell you that religion is very powerful. Religion will stand in the presence of God, and you understand? 
and it will not shake. That's like the only thing God uses to, to, to vanquish religion is the truth. The revelation of himself. That is what truth is. The revelation of himself. In an environment where sick is being healed, where people are speaking in tongues, where gift is operating, religion will sit down there. In fact, we even be officiating in that meeting. I'm telling you, we've seen it happen. that survived centuries. Centuries. <laughs> Madam Yvonne said I would call you. <laughs> Don't worry. I'm doing, I'm doing countdown for you too. <laughs> All right, all right. You know, now, <clears throat> now, just in case you're wondering, okay, is there any need for, so what, where is not the place of celebration that the child is born? There is nothing spiritual about celebration. Just copy to come and eat rice. <laughs> it's just come and eat rice. <laughs> there is nothing spiritual <laughs> about it. There is nothing spiritual about coming to eat rice. You know, in fact, people don't need to come and pray. <laughs> Just tell them, come and celebrate with us. We have a, a new baby. We have, <laughs> come and eat rice. We have rice, chicken, salads, you know, um, what? <laughs> Elephant meat, <laughs> crocodile meat, <laughs> monkey meat, <laughs> and lots of seafood. <laughs> come and enjoy yourself. Just tell people that. Don't say, come and help us, you know, join us in the dedication of our baby. <laughs> Stop allowing your angels to continually be alarmed <laughs> at continued ignorance after these years of being saved. <laughs> Glory to God. <laughs> yes. Yes. <laughs> yes. 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 All right. All right. Now we're still. <laughs> Proceeding. <laughs> yes, ma. <laughs> Not in a good way. <laughs> I don't want to make sure. Someone says, someone says, Pastor, you have naughty children, no? <laughs> yes, ma, exactly. <laughs> Made naughty by revelation truth. <laughs> Yes, yes, ma. You are right. All right. <clears throat> okay. Uh, all right. Okay, now let's proceed. All right, now it's important that these things are touched on. All right. It's important that these things are touched on. Now, how do we get into all of this? The fact that the Lord gave, you know, one of the things, rather, that the Lord did for the children of Israel, all right, was to give them, you know, um, um, a perspective of life, you know, as a single reality, as a single unit, you see? And we said that the stories that they have as a heritage, you know, of God's, you know, you know interventions, of God's involvement, in the lives of their ancestors, all right, was, you know, a witness to that. You see, they had stories told them of the involvement of God in the lives, in the affairs of the ancestors, you know, and those stories of God's involvement in the lives of the ancestors, all right, cuts across every, you know, area of life, every area of life, every area of life. Look at Abraham. 
Abraham's son was going to get married. Can you imagine? Marriage. 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 You will see modern Christians tell you today that there's nothing like the will of God in marriage. Just marry a Christian sister. She's good. She has to just marry her. Mod I mean, you, not just modern, ministers, New Testament, New Creation, faith, charismatic teachers. Say that. You see? Meanwhile, you would, you would, you would see Abraham. You will see Abraham getting an angel involved. Getting an angel involved. You see, the moment Eleazi was going to say, Master, what of if the lady is not willing to come? What of if the lady, because of the distance, of course, the lady shouldn't want to come now. You know, it's, 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 a, it's a long distance. So what if she's not going to come? Should I get a wife from this land for your son? He said, no. The next thing Abraham did was to switch. He switched immediately, all right, to angelic help. So much so that by the time that Eliezer got to, the, to where Rebecca was, and Rebecca dipped her, you know, whatever, into the well and filled the drinking trough, trough, you know, with water for the camels that Eliezer was, you know, bringing with him to drink from. Eliezer, the Bible says, Eliezer went on his knees and thanked the Lord God of his master who had sent his angels to go ahead of him. You see, Abraham went as far as expecting and demanding for the involvement of angels. You see, in ensuring, you know, ease. Ease. All right? In ensuring ease. You see? Where, you know, the choice of a wife for his son is concerned. You see, it's important. This was how God dealt with these men even long before the law was given. Long before the law was given, God, by, by manifestation, all right, you know, and by revelation, repeatedly made the people who walked with him realize, all right, that he is involved and wants to be involved in every area of their lives. You see, look at Abraham too. Look at how he pulled divine strings, all right? In the middle of warfare, he was going to go against four kings, four kings with each of their armies. These kings didn't come with 10, 10 soldiers. They came with massive, massive military, you know, personnel and artillery for them to have conquered the five kings. Four kings, conquered five kings and their armies and took every one of them as spoils of battle. Only for Abraham to go after them with just 300 and what? 17 of trained servants. Trained servants in what now? Their training was not in warfare. It was not in warfare. Their trainings was in the, in the industries. Abraham was running. Abraham had industries. But of course, what do you expect? You can't have, you don't expect to have 10,000 cows and not have an industry. You'll be producing milk. You don't expect to have that number of you know, animals and not have a leather factory and not have a dairy company. You see? So these guys, their training was in skilled labor. They were skilled laborers. Besides being slaves, they were skilled laborers. That was what their training was. Skilled laborer. They had no experience in warfare. Abraham never fought war. Never fought war from when he was in a he was in a, um, um, awe of Chaldee to when he moved to Haran before he now moved again. Never had an experience in warfare. So you see, that was the reason why when the Bible said that he was coming back from the slot of Chadolauma, that Melchizedek, the king of Salem, and the priest of God, all right, came to meet him, all right, with bread and wine. Now, look at the manner of words he spoke over him. You will know that Abraham's conquest wasn't based on skill, wasn't based on military training. The first thing he said is, blessed be Abraham. 
blessed be Abraham, all right, of the Most High God, possessor of heaven and earth. Now, it's not the Most High God that is possessor of heaven and earth. It was Abraham <laughs> that he was referring to, all right, who had become possessor of heaven and earth. In God, you see, he read, you see, by revelation, by that level of high priestly lesser perspective, he could see into the trackings of the, he could track into the dealings of God. All right. That had, that had, that had, that had, you know, sunk into Abraham's heart by revelation. So he said, blessed be Abraham of the most high God, possessor of heaven and earth. All right. Number two, in that says, and blessed be the most high God who has delivered your enemies into your hands. You see, so if it was by sheer military strength, he shouldn't be praising God. He shouldn't be thanking God who delivered his enemies into... No. No. So you see, so now these are examples <coughs> of the kind of, you know, stories, you know, heritage that, that, that the children of Israel had which further, you know, establishes this single perspective, you know, of life given to them by the Lord, by the Lord. So it further positioned their heart, it further positioned their heart to always expect. It became natural, listen, it became natural for the average children of Israel, all right, to expect divine, divine intervention in their day-to-day -day activity. It became natural. It became natural. Look at the ease, for example, now, before the law now, look at the ease with which Jacob was telling the story of the dream he had to his wives. Because he told his wives, when Laban became jealous, you know, became envious at, you know, what was turning out <laughs> as against what he had planned. He told his wives, his, as Rachel and Leah, how that it was in the night visions, an angel had appeared to him and had given him, given him instruction on what to do. It was, he said it was an angel that told him to set up those plants the way he did. The way he did. Those kind of, you know, interventions, all right, were normal, were expected. You see, normal and expected. They were expected. Normal. In fact, it was abnormal for you not to have such kind of divine, supernatural, you know, intervention. It became abnormal. You know, it became abnormal. You know, you know how life works right now for many people where, you know, it is normal for defeat to happen. You know, it is normal for there to be losses. It is normal for, you know, those kind of, you know, that's not, see, if people who live under the law, who live by, by, the covenant that was available in the law, all right, did not accept that. Why should you? <clears throat> Why should you? Why should you? Glory to God. Glory, glory to Jesus. So it was, <clears throat> it was expected. It was normal. Normal for them to expect, you know, you know, the, the involvement of angels. It was normal for them to expect, you know, you know, supernatural deluge of blessings. It was normal. It was normal. It's, it became a, you know, a, a, it became, you know, the definition of, of the natural positioning of their heart, the natural stance, you know, of their heart. You know. Look at Isaac. In a time of famine, look at the ease with which Isaac heard God. And the ease with which he just hacking to what God said. He heard God and just hacking to what God said. 
Yes, but of course we know Isaac was well, he was well raised. He has seen his father follow the instructions given to him by God in the face of seeming impossibility, seeming difficulty. So Isaac followed the same example. Don't forget God had commanded Abraham. He said, if I know Abraham, I know he will command his house after the ways of God. In the time of famine, Isaac received the instruction to sow. You see, he did. He sowed. Now listen, that sowing wasn't just giving money to ministry. <laughs> Relax. Of course, you should, you know, <laughs> we know what the scripture says about that. You know, but a lot of times, you know, ministers use that scripture, you know, as you need to sow, you know, sow into this ministry so that, like Isaac, you know, <laughs> That's so in Isaac did. All right. Think of it as a business deal. <clears throat> All right. Think of it as a business decision. Think of it as a business decision. It was a business decision in the midst of economic downtime, in the midst of economic crisis. You know, think of it as an investment. And a major one at that, major investment at that. That was the basis for that instruction. That was the basis for that instruction. You see, that was the basis for that instruction. Because the situation that land was in was an economic situation. Scripture says people were running away. Isaac too was going to do the same because that's what everybody was going to do. When the Lord told him, he said, no, you don't go anywhere. Don't move and stay here. All right? Stay here. So, so, you see, so, you see, so, instruction, know that instruction. So you look at it. In Isaac's time, the Lord told him, stay and so, all right? But in Jacob's time, what was the direction the Lord gave? Move. They moved, and in order to, in order to, you know, ensure their survival, David tells us in Psalm 107, I mentioned that earlier, all right, that God, in order to preserve Israel, sent Joseph ahead of them, you see, but in Isaac's time, it wasn't to move, it was to remain, and so, it was to stay back and do business, you see, it was to stay back and invest. That was the instruction. Invest. You know, take that business deal. Even when it's appearing that everything is falling apart, it's not going to work. It's not going to work. It's not going to work. You see, now that, that's, that's by the way. So you see, all of this, so all of this, you know, you see God, you see God, listen, yes, it was God, it was God, we know, we've dealt with that, we know it was God dealing with them via the instrumentality of who? Of angels, but it was God, all right? We are not going to all the day, we've done all those nitty-gritty exegesis, we've done all of that, all right, all right? So when we say it is God, you know what I mean, all right, all right? Via the instrumentality of angels, instructing them, you see? God, God's angels were involved in ensuring their survival. So the thought of their own survival wasn't even their personal concern. What they focused their heart on was aligning with the advance of God's kingdom. You see, because by this time, by this time they already knew, all right, that they were conduits. They knew they were conduits for the fulfillment of salvation for all of mankind. They knew. They knew. They knew that there was something that they were not carrying in their genealogy, you see, that must carefully be passed. You see, that was what the scripture refers to as the blessing that Isaac gave to Jacob, all right, that made Isaac tell Esau, that I don't have it anymore. It's if I've given it to your brother. No, if the blessing he gave to his brother was just prayer pronouncement, what is wrong with repeating the same prayer? 
He knew something past, something that he had been custodying for years that he received from his father had passed from him to Jacob. And it cannot be taken back. It cannot be taken back. They knew. They knew. So part of the responsibility of the angels of God in their lives was to ensure their survival. That was why when you look at Jacob, for example, when the angel of the Lord appeared to him, the angel appeared to him to come and deal with a wrong heart state that couldn't be allowed to continue, all right, in a man, all right, who was now, you know, in possession, as it were, of what? Of the promise of salvation. He couldn't. That was the reason for that confrontation. Like we've explained that in previous teaching. It was not a physical body to body, you know, a WrestleMania kind of context. It was a heart. It was a context, <coughs> as it were, or a wrestle in the heart region. You see? So Jacob's resistance wasn't a physical muscle to muscle resistance. No. Jacob's resistance, all right, was as a result of Jacob wanting to hold on to a false heart position that the angel had been sent to bring judgment to. So when you hear Jacob say, I will not let you go except you bless me, it was not that Jacob was holding him to ransom. He couldn't have done that. It was not the same angel that now he just touched. He didn't strike. He just touched what? His hip and became dislocated. So the angel suddenly just woke up and realized that, wait a minute, I've got powers. I'm an avenger. <laughs> I belong to the Marvel Avenger group. <clears throat> Excuse me. You know, no. The rest was in the heart. It was in the heart. All right, we've dealt with that in previous teaching series. You know, now, so it's important to understand. So, it, 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 because of their alignment to purpose, all right, angels god's angels became involved became involved in their lives became you, see, you need to please you know sorry we're having to stretch this again all right i beg you so we're having to stretch this all right maybe we need to remind ourselves you know we need to renew our minds renew our minds to what is naturally obtainable in the kingdom we need to renew our minds. Look, look at this. These men were not in court, full of the Holy Ghost. But see the see the ease with which they spoke. See the audaciousness with which they spoke of the provisions, you know, supernatural provision of the kingdom. Look at Jacob, for example. When Jacob was going to um when when he was going to bless the sons of um Joseph, Ephraim, and Manasseh. You know, and the Bible says that, you know, don't forget, he was already blind at the time, lost his physical sight, you know, and um, um, Joseph had brought these two, you know, young, you know, young boys to, 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 to the granddad, you know, and the granddad, you know, uh, uh, um, you know, didn't see them, but his hands, you know, when Jacob brought them close to him, the Bible said that he stretched his hand wittily and crossed them, crossed them, all right, crossed his hands over the two young men. Okay, he crossed his hand over the two young men. Crossed his hand over the two young men. You know, who does that? Who, who, prays, who prays like that? You know, who prays like that? Crossed his hand. Now, the Bible said that when um, 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 Joseph saw that, he wanted to correct the hand and, and told his father, he said, not so, not so, father. Not so. And the Bible said, Jacob was going to say, I know. I know. I know. He said, yes. He hit this one too. The elders too will be blessed too. But you see, so it was by divine sight that he did what he did. But what I want to bring out of that was, if you read that passage of scripture in Genesis, as he prayed, all right, this man went as far as in pronouncing a blessing over these two young men. He went as far as what, as it were, passing on, in a sense, passing on the angelic provision that he had enjoyed to his grandchildren. Who? How, how do you do that? You know, what I want to bring out is, look at the easy he was. Look at how he was just talking about angel like that. Is that how they, is that how you just talking about angel? Meanwhile, 
the average Christian that has eternal life, you see, a recipient and manifestation of salvation that has the Holy Ghost living in him, mention angel, you will be shocked at the missed reaction you will get. Some will respond with shock. Some will tell you angels are Old Testament. <laughs> Beans that you. <laughs> actually had the minister tell me that some, some three years ago. You know, you hear all kinds of like, really? You know, really? So when the scripture says that they are sent to be ministers to those who shall be heads of salvation, no, what are they doing in your life? Just watching you wake up, watching you snore, watching you eat. Then what else? Follow you to Christian gathering <laughs> and enjoy the presence of God. <laughs> Is that all they do for you? You see? Now, if in the Old Testament, the presence, the ministry of angels were tangibly, tangibly felt. You see, it does mean that now, all right, in this dispensation of grace, in this dispensation, all right, of Christ, all right, they ought to be more tangibly manifest in your life. More tangibly manifest in your life. And listen very carefully. Angels, all right, function from the environment of heaven, including the angels that have been assigned to you. You see, they function by the dictate of heaven. They function by the intelligence of heaven. So when you see a believer, all right, who though is a believer, all right, but has one over his, his brain, one over his brain, Greek thinking, you see, he's wearing as a helmet, Greek thinking. Angels don't have all right, they don't have any responsibility to respond to such a believer. Yes, they are there. They are forever there, stationed. You see, but they will not, they are not under any accountability to bring divine help to you. All right, as long as the mindset that you are carrying is different from the civilization of heaven. You see, this is one of the reasons why many Christians suffer. Many through sincere, you know, Holy Ghost filled, you know, believers suffer. You see, the intelligence that powers, that drives the activities of angels, all right, is that of heaven. Now, the simplest way scripture put it, you know, I was going to quote Psalm 103 the other time. The simplest scripture put it is this. It says, bless the Lord, these angels that are mighty in strength. One said that excelleth in strength. I hope you know might is much more than strength. Now, it says they are mighty in strength. One says they are excelleth in strength. You see, then he goes on to say that, still speaking about the angels, that what? That hacking, hacking to the voice of his word. Now, the simple definition of hacking there is to hear, to do. To hear, to do. They don't just hear. You see, they hear to do. They hear to do, hence why it, why it, it is said there, that it is to the voice of his word. Now, notice it does not say that they hearken to his word. He said they hearken to the voice of his word. You see, so he's telling you, now he's speaking about the activities of angels in relation to their involvement with man. In relation, the angels of God know what the word of God says. You see, but he's saying in connection to their involvement with you, what triggers them to action, all right, is when you give voice, when you give voice, when you give voice to the word. 
You see, angels know what the word says. Angels know that they are not supposed to allow you run under, you know, run under a trailer. Angels know that nothing is supposed to go missing in your life. Angels know that even if something happened to fall from your pocket, if something happened to fall from you, all right, nobody should be able to pick it up because it's yours. They know. You see, and every other thing that they are assigned to do. Angels know, for example, if you're headed, you know, in a direction while driving, and there's a terrible traffic congestion, you know, maybe a couple of kilometers from where you are, they know that they have a responsibility, you see, they have a responsibility to speak into your heart. You must understand that. It is not only the Holy Spirit that speaks to you. Angels to speak to believers. They speak to believers. Angels speak to believers. You see, they do speak to believers. And listening very carefully, everyone listening. All right. Now, mastering, mastering, number one, the area of hearing God. All right. Is very important for you. All right. As someone positioned by God in what the world referred to today as the secular. All right. Then also, all right. Mastering hearing God, all right, well enough to the point where your heart is also in tune and receptive to the ministries of angels, all right, is very key. Let me tell you something. There are things about God's plan for you, God will not tell you. He will rather have it communicated to you by angels, particularly the angels he has assigned to you. You see, the angels he assigns to you have responsibilities. And God is a God of order. He will not withdraw responsibility for, from those that he already assigned them to. He won't do that. He won't do that. The scripture is full of such examples. And contemporary examples are scattered all over in history. In history, in the scriptures, you will see angels, you know, minister, talk to people. People who had had a prior experience of God talking to them. But why didn't the same God who spoke to them now speak to them? Why not sending an angel? Or what about if you go over into the New Testament? In the New Testament, you will see angels talk to the apostles, talk to the saints. These are New Testament saints. Why didn't the Holy Ghost, who now lives in them, not talk to them? Do you understand? Why wasn't the Holy Spirit the one in a direct sense? You know what I mean by that? Why wasn't the one who spoke to Philip? He should have been the one to talk to Philip to go to the desert, right? Where he made the Ethiopian eunuch. Why did he send an angel? Is the Holy Spirit not all knowing? Is it that the Holy Ghost didn't know? But of course we know the person who oversees the ministry of angels is the Holy Ghost. So you don't tell him what paraphernalia of heaven he should use to guide you. You don't determine that for him. What about Paul too? You know, after days of being tossed back and forth on sea, the Bible said that Paul got up and said to the people on, on board and said, for there stood by me an angel of the Lord, whose I am, whom I serve. An angel of the Lord. This was Paul who was used to hearing the Holy Ghost. This was Paul that was used to seeing Jesus. Why was it an angel? He said the Holy Spirit was the Holy Ghost was afraid of coming on board. He was afraid, you know, you know, he's sinner. You understand? <laughs> but the Holy Ghost sent an angel. Sent an angel. An angel was the instrument that brought word of comfort. Word of comfort. An angel was the instrument used by the Holy Ghost to bring a word of wisdom. Told him, didn't just tell him that though or not to happen. He told him what was going to happen eventually. Now, one of the reasons why without, you know, any prior plan, you know, entered into the subject of angels is because it's also something we're going to talk about. All right. 
Because right now, I tell you this, all right? There are increased activities of angels. You see, first, over the lives of believers in the church and on earth currently. I'm telling you. And you see, listen carefully, listen. Angels, now putting it in a very mild way, angels are creatures that thrive by partnership. Maybe you need to write it down wherever you are. Are we still here? Hello, everyone. Hi, sir. All right. Right here. All right. So let's quickly note that down. All right. Quickly make a note of that. Write that down. Not just in your mind. First in black and white. Then electronically. Then uh -huh, in your heart. <clears throat> Yes. So we said angels, all right, <clears throat> are creatures or beings that thrive, all right? They thrive, all right, via partnership. It is in their, it is in their constitution. You see, that is the reason why, that is the reason why, you know, you see that, Angels are not in the, you know, uh, this may be difficult to put in words, but in, I, I'll say it in a way that, you know, so that we can get the point I'm trying to make. All right. This is the reason why you see that angels are almost helpless when God's children are in state of chaos. You see, God's children die. Angels are there when they died now. Angels were there. No, you think their angels went on break? No. Oh. When you see, you see, you hear of them, um, you know, playing crash you know plane crash they were christians the angels were there so the question is why did the angels do anything or you hear of auto crash angels were there angels were there or you hear people drown in the sea angels were there what were the angels doing and we know a lot of people are asking that question it's not a complex, it's not a difficult question. It's as simple as is stated in scriptures. You see, same thing too, when things go wrong, all right, maybe somebody breaks into, you know, a believer's house in his absence, in her absence, and, and make away with things. Angels were there. You see, now, just in case somebody's wondering, I, I thought your angels follow you everywhere. They do. But you must understand, I told you, they function by the civilization of heaven. Now, listen. Angels that are in, involved, angels that are assigned to you, all right? The assigning of angels to you, all right? You must understand this. Please listen very carefully. When angels are assigned to a person, all right, everything that belongs to that person, all right, is in the same environment. You know, it's on earth that, you know, your things can be in different places. All right? Separated by distance and time, right? You know, you, you have a house uh, maybe somewhere, you know, somewhere in the north, then your place of work, you know, those kind of, you know, you know, those, those kind of, then your, your place of work is somewhere. No, 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 no. 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 Everything that is yours, all right, is in the same space is in the same eternity space, you see, from whence an angel functions. You see, angels have, you know, angels have it as an impossibility to recognize space and time. You understand that? Angels don't 
recognize space and time. They don't recognize space and time. So just in case, for example, you 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 um 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 you um let's say for example you you went to the US, all right, or you live in the US currently, and then before you move to the US, you you had a house in Nigeria, all right, or you invested in a business in Nigeria, but you live in the US currently. <laughs> They just don't understand that. You see, both you that lives in the US and your business investment or your house that is in Nigeria, you, all of you put together exist in the same space. So when you in the US leave your house in the US and go to your place of work, now, within the environment of space and time, that is what, that is adding a third geography location right so you are in a place of work you have your house you have what an investment in nigeria right see even though your angel goes everywhere you go <laughs> even though your angel go everywhere you go everything that is yours is in the same all right common eternal space all right from where that angel functions. You see, and that is why the moment you acquire something new that becomes added to the list of what is now yours, it automatically enters into that eternal space. So <laughs> even though your angel follows you to work, your angel never leaves. Now, this is just one angel we're talking about too. Now, this is not to mean that angels are omnipresent. They are incapable of being omnipresent. They're not omnipresent. Can never be, will never be omnipresent. You see. Now, this is just a small, you see, this is just small operation. And yet they are not, they are not immortal. You know, they are not immortal. I hope you know that. They are not immortal. Now, the subject of immortality is not just not dying. It's not just not dying. The scripture says the only person that dwells in a light, all right, that no man can approach, who alone is what? Who, whom alone belongs to immortality is who? Is who? Is who now? Are you afraid of saying God? <laughs> like I'm not doing Bible study. Don't be afraid. <laughs> all right. All right. <laughs> all right. So, so you see, um, so that's that. So angels are uh, increasingly increasingly available today i'm telling you increasingly available today and listening to me dear child of god listening to me don't let anybody tell you otherwise listening to me all right god's angels see want to be a part of your life want to be a part of everything you are involved in all right, in a more tangible way than they were, all right, in the lives of people who lived under the law and before the law. I'm telling you. But the thing that breaks it, all right, the first thing that must break, all right, to, 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 to create, to create that, you know, um, um, an accelerated involvement of their ministry is what we've been talking about for a while now, this shift of mindset. Because like I was saying earlier, angels don't understand when you say you have financial life, you have marital life. They don't understand that. They don't understand that. They don't understand when you say you have an um, academic life and you have, no, they don't understand that.
They don't understand that. You see? They don't understand that. They don't understand many of the prayers God's children pray. Because they know. They angels, angels know. Angels know. Angels know, all right, they know, they know what you have become a partaker of, all right, in the new covenant. And in a sense, they expect a higher level of spiritual intelligence from you than they did expect, all right, from people that lived under the law. You see, look, 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 look at, um, um, look at um, um, Zechariah, all right, the father of John the Baptist. You see, I want to draw an illustration from that. I want to look at that. You know, this guy was a priest, and as at that time he was serving his turn. You know, as far as priestly, you know, services. You know, in the at the time synagogue temple, all right, was you know concerned. Now the Bible says when Gabriel appeared to him, you see. Gabriel appeared to him and gave him the words, the good news, that his wife was going to conceive. Now, you notice, you remember what happened? Um, Zacharias' first response was unbelief. He said, how shall this be, seeing that my wife is old? Now, did you notice, can you remember Gabriel's response? Gabriel says, if I am Gabriel, that stands before the Lord, God of the whole earth, say, how dare you doubt my word? You see, Gabriel expected more because he wasn't just a Jew, he was a priest. The Bible tells us in the book of Malachi, it says priests ought to retain knowledge. Priests ought to be what? Possessors of knowledge. <clears throat> so the, 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 what would you call that now? The, the, the harshness with which Gabriel responded to, to Zachariah was in relation to Zachariah's you know, ranking he was a priest of God. He was a priest of God. If anybody is to have doubt in God, should he be a priest? Should he be a priest? No, he shouldn't be a priest. He shouldn't be a priest. You look at angels appear to people in, in Bible times, in the Old Testament, other people, and you see how angels will put up with their unbelief. Angels will put up with their doubts. You see, <coughs> but with Zachariah, with Zachariah, all right, it was with what? Stainless. Look at Daniel, for example, too. When you look at Daniel, you know, look at how the angel spoke to him. Daniel was currently being overpowered by the level of light and heavenly, you know, glory that was exuding from this angel. Overpowered. Now, of course, the angel should know that this is what is making Daniel powerless. But look at how he spoke to Daniel. He said, get up on your feet. He said, for to give you skill and wisdom and revelation, have I not been sent to you? Why? He spoke to Daniel that way because he expected more. He expected more. He expected more. You know, so listen very carefully, folks. Angels are on an increasing level, all right, involved, all right, in the affairs of saints, all right, today than before, all right, than before. Done before. Are we still here? Hello, everyone.
Hi, Papa. Hi, Sa. Hello, Sa. Still here. Hi, Pastor. Hi. Hi. All right. So you see, <clears throat> that's um, a subject we're also going to look at. We're going to visit that, revisit that. But from time to time, as we share, it will come up. All right. It will come up in our, you know, in our sessions, in our conversations, in our conversations. All right. Now, very quickly, um, I want us to um, um, look at a couple of things from scriptures. From scriptures. Yeah. Okay. Now, first of all, um, in the morning session or the earlier session, I had highlighted a couple of things from um, Genesis 1, all right, um, what is popularly referred to as the dominion mandate, all right, and we said, um, we mentioned the fact that it was at that point that the dominion mandate was spoken into man, all right, into him long before he was even formed. All right, the dominion mandate was spoken into man before he was even formed. Now, it was at that point that, you know, what you may refer to as an entrepreneurial spirit was released into man. You see, now we already explained that the word entrepreneurial or entrepreneur and all of that, all right, are, you know, earthly language. Now, the way heaven views, all right, um, being entrepreneurial, all right, is um, in relation to, you know, stewardship, all right? It is as it relates to stewardship, all right? It is as it relates to, you know, um, kingdom administration, all right? Functioning as an administrator, you see, an administrator is not just someone who controls, all right, but basically someone, all right, who primarily extends the influence, you see, now of course in relation to the kingdom now, someone who extends the influence, who extends the, the economy, who extends the desire, the will, the counsel of the government of God into the world. You see, and one of the reasons, you know, why work, I was saying this in the earlier session, one of the reasons why work is spiritual, you know, I said that earlier, work is spiritual. You see, work, all right, is one of God's way of training you, training you, training you to eventually Training you to, you know, um, master, training you to master, all right, the responsibility that comes with the dominion mandate. You see, that comes with the dominion mandate. That's because, see, the Lord understands, the Lord understands that work is spiritual you see work in whatever form all right listen carefully work involves the participation it involves the life force that flows from a man's heart work you see involves the life force 
that flows from a man's heart. You see, there is no work, you see, that does not impact upon a man's heart. That is why every form of work you see, the true nature of a man's heart is seen. The true state of a man's heart is exposed. You see, So that's the reason why for me personally, all right, I do not consider anybody, I do not consider anybody's spirituality thorough and complete if he doesn't have work that he's doing. It doesn't matter how small it is. It doesn't matter how small it is. You see, it doesn't matter how small the work is. No person's spirituality is complete without work. I'm telling you. No person's spirituality is thorough or complete without work. It doesn't exist. Some persons may wait to find out too late. But I'm telling you. They may wait to find out too late. You know? Now, like I said earlier, because you see, through work, all right, through work, so let's use maybe more modern words, right? Enterprise, all right? Every work is an enterprise, all right? Whether you are you know, employed in an organization, all right, or you are running, um, you know, your own um, 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 enterprise. You have oversight over your personal, you know, enterprise, or you are, you know, wh whatever, you see, all right? So I think a better word is enterprise, you see. Now, one of the ways that the Lord <coughs> sees to it. One of the ways that the Lord sees to it, that a believer begins to learn the art of living from the heart, you know, in a governmental way, in a governmental way, is via enterprise or via work. It's important that we understand this. And this is not about your survival. No. This is more of stewardship. This is more of responsibility. Because to the degree to which your heart is exercised here and now, you see, to that degree, to the same degree, or to the proportionality of that degree, all right, your heart, all right, will function governmentally, you see, in the realms of the kingdom, both here and now, all right, and in quotes, in the suite, by and by. You see, it's important that we understand this. So when you look at the first man in Genesis 1, you would see that the Lord spoke the mandate. The Lord spoke the mandate of dominion into his heart. All right? From the moment that he emerged. All right? From the moment that he was created. All right? Before a body was even formed for him. God spoke the responsibility for dominion. Dominion is responsibility. 
You see, dominion is assignment. Is assignment. It is assignment. Now, once a believer understands this, all right, it creates a whole lot of mental shift. For it, such that, for example, you know, when you're in the middle of a business, you know, or you are, you know, you 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 are desiring certain, you know, some kind of change, you know, in business, you see, certain kinds of, you know, hurdles needs to be crossed in business, or where finance is connected is concerned, where jobs opportunity or contracts are concerned, you see, understanding this, all right, brings you to a place of rest, all right, where the exercise of heart faith, you see, is concerned. You will come to realize that we should get this target met by the operations of faith. You see, we should get this target met by the operations of faith. You see, this is one of the blessings that comes from hurdles. This is one of the blessings that challenges present. This is one of the blessings that difficulties. Now, don't get me wrong. It's not God that brings difficulties, but God allows them, allows them to come to you. You see, allows them to come to you. You see, such that, you know, on the job, you're able to tap into God's wisdom. Tap into God's wisdom. So much so that what? As a result, all right, solutions, all right, enter into your heart. Divine strategies overlap, overlap upon, you know, human efforts. Where human effort has, you know, reached its brick, you know, it's it's brick wall. All right, divine solutions overlap, and new ways are created that was not physically, humanly, naturally there previously. You understand that? A way just appears, just like we said in relation to in relation, you know, with um, to um, to Haggai and the angel. There was no water there. But as soon as the angel was done speaking, water showed up. Water showed up. So you are able to tap into God's wisdom. And we've said this many times, that every time you exercise your heart, it becomes enlarged. I'm telling you, every time you exercise you know, your heart, all right, within the light of God's word, within the revelation of God's kingdom, all right, you gain new boundaries. You gain new boundaries in your heart. You gain new spheres. The expansion of hearts that will not come by prayer. The expansion of heart that will come by prayer, but there are some that will not come by prayer. Some will require the practical exercise of the heart where real problems exist. Real problems exist. Real problems exist. Look at the way Apostle Paul put it in the book of 1 Corinthians when he was rebuking the Corinthian church for not being matured enough or not having a mature person to, 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 to you know, address disputes amongst brethren. And in rebuking them, he now said, don't you know you will judge the world? Don't you know you will judge angels? If, for example, you are involved in an enterprise, you know, that maybe currently there's a challenge, all right, that, you know, as far as, you know, uh, um, Cash is concerned, finance is concerned. Maybe, you know, it's, it's about a hundred million. And a hundred million is making you to sink, to sh short, to short circuit in faith. Now, is it the same you? Is it the same you that want to, that want to govern worlds? What kind of words do you think Paul was talking about? You think it's words of America and the words of um, uh, Puerto Rico and the uh, what? Bahamas? He's talking about what? Dimensions dimensions governed by angelic princes so don't you know you will you will govern 
George, that's what it means to George. You will not just govern the world. He said you will govern the, the beings. It is the beings over them that he refers to as angels. If on the, and I'm not talking personally, but let me just quickly bring up this and I'll just quickly retract. You know, um, you know, change direction again. You know, if on a personal level, on a personal level, a need, a personal need of 10 million, 20 million makes your heart to sink. Hey, what's that? What is that? How much more now? All right, it has to do with a need, all right, within the environment of an enterprise. Of an enterprise. You know, these are things, all right, that you don't sleep over. These are things you ensure your heart stays alive around, all right, on the authority of God's word until, until it is conquered in your heart. It is conquered in your heart. You see, a lot of times, some believers have this wrong notion that, you know, um, um, you know, governing in the kingdom realm, you know, is just, you know, is just, just, just going to just be happening. No! 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 Governing the kingdom realm will be based on practice, will be based on mastery. It will be based on salvation. Do you almost understand that? We all, we all participate of salvation. We are all recipients of salvation. But going onward, after experiencing salvation, there must be progress, there must be growth, there must be maturity, there must be development, there must be mastery gained. And listen, folks, that is one of the blessings of being on earth. That is one of the blessings, yes, of being in Babylon. Do you understand that? It's one of the blessings. It's one of the, see, listen, listen, everyone, listen to me, all right? Now you talk about co corruption in government in the in high places, you know, government. You know, listen, you are blessed to be on earth at this time. You're blessed to be on earth at these dark times that is upon the nations of the earth. You are blessed. You are blessed. If if only you can see that saints who are in the heavens right now, all right. If if they if they are given the opportunity, they want to come back on earth. That is the reason why. That is the reason why. From that environment, they are fully involved. Do you understand? Their involvement with saints, all right, on earth is at its peak. The level of, of buzzing activity, shooting out of the cloud of witnesses, it is at all time high. You must understand that. You must understand that. All time high. All time high. The level of, of impartations. Listen, come out of those myopic, you know, Bible interpretation. You know, some people say, no, I don't believe in cloud of witness. No, don't believe. Your unbelief, your unbelief will not change the architecture of God's kingdom. <clears throat> you know, you say, well, my pastor doesn't believe in it. Okay, good for you. All right, good for you. You know, <laughs> you know, you know. <laughs> But listen, if you are in this meeting or in this class, these are things we are going to be touching. All right? They are increasing involvement, you see, of saints. You see? Because as far as they are concerned, there is no separation. Paul acknowledged that. You see? In the scriptures, by the spirit of revelation. All right? He acknowledged that. So right now, you see, one of the things that, you know, members of the cloud of witnesses are doing, all right, is furnishing saints, all right, in this sphere, all right, with some kind of impartation of the witness of Christ that their heart came into, all right, which in turn informed the audacity, all right, the conviction and the faith with which they conquered kingdoms, you see, to the degree to which they did, all right, the way they did. It's important we understand this. So you must understand, it is not, it is no longer your race. It's not just your race. 
is a collective thing. You see, the advance of the kingdom is not just about God's purpose for your life. Yes, that's God's purpose for your life. All right, is a tiny little winning piece, you see, of a complete picture. Hence why it calls for the concern and attention, you see, of the collective whole. Glory to God. Glory. Glory. All right. So we're saying that that dominion was spoken was spoken into man's heart, all right, at the point of his creation as a responsibility, as an assignment. You see, as an assignment. It was a responsibility, it was an assignment. You see, in every way, in every way, in every way. So man, man, all right, was to take on that responsibility, you see, of advancing God's kingdom. Now, God's kingdom, the advancing of God's kingdom in this context now, all right, is that, you know, created peace, all right, that created peace, that created sphere, you see, of beauty and perfection and excellence all right he was given a responsibility to you know take that peace and cause it to you know spread expand and explode into the rest of the darkness until there was no more darkness Do you know the bible tells us in chapter one of that genesis verse two all right verse one says in the beginning god created the heavens and the earth all right Verse 2 says, and the head was without form and void. And darkness was upon the face of the deep. Now we've explained, covered this in previous teachings. Now, the, 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 you know, the, the destructive collision, all right, that defined the current state of, you know, the subsphere. You see, God gave man the responsibility you see, God didn't give man the responsibility of creation. He didn't give the first man the responsibility of creation. What did God do? He did, God himself did not even create. All right? He didn't even create. All right? We've explained this in previous teachings. All right? He called forth light, you know, did all of that, you know, and all of that. Now, what responsibility he gave to man is to take that which he had put together, all right, as, you know, an example or an image, a template, all right, of beauty, all right, and cause it to explode. Hence, why the scripture says, God said to man, be fruitful. It wasn't a blessing, all right? It was a blessing of responsibility. I know your King James says, and God blessed them, and God said, be fruitful, all right, multiply, replenish. It was a blessing, all right, of responsibility. You understand? It was a blessing. See, a lot of people don't understand the blessings of God. You know, people, you know, when you've lived on earth too long and not had your mind renewed, you think blessing must always what? Must always have your profit. 
your gain in view. Do you know that God continues to, in quotes, in quotes, in a sense, God continues to bless saints who are already in heaven. And saints who are in heaven are not buying new cars, buying new houses. <laughs> we'll talk about that, the blessing of God. All right. I've thought about that a couple of times. The message we'll title the blessing of God. You know, we'll look at the architecture of God's blessing. What does it mean when you talk about the blessing of God? You know, you know, <laughs> you know. So, yes, yeah, the scripture says that God blessed them. You see, in the blessing of God, God, all right, spoke into their heart consciousness. All right. divine responsibility all right which in turn which in turn would ensure they are you know evolving because don't forget we've explained the fact that the first man was not the image of god okay the first man was not the image of god the first man was not the image of god you see, I hope nobody's struggling with that, all right? We've dealt with that in previous teachings. The first man was not the image of God, all right? But this first man was to, you know, journey. This first man was to progress and navigate around certain divine bends, you know, of dealings, you know, that in turn was to help him arrive at that state of being the image of God, you see? Part of the bends and divine navigations he was to come around, which in turn was to help him, you know, arrive at that state. All right, is taking on this responsibility. So it was a blessing, all right, of responsibility. You see, it was a blessing of responsibility. It was a blessing, all right, of assignment. You see. Now, in carrying out that responsibility, a whole lot was to happen to man. A whole lot, all right? In carrying that responsibility, man, the summary, you know, what we can say that would have happened to man is that man would just notice that he's, he was just evolving. You see, he was just evolving. You see, until he arrives at that state, all right, of being the image of God, the likeness of God. You see? So you see, the responsibility, all right, or the blessing spoken over them for being responsible, for being responsible, you see? was a blessing was a blessing to help them all right to help him or help them you see attain a level of stature that wouldn't have come any other way that wouldn't have come any other way now this is where the subject of the heart comes into the picture This is where the subject of the heart comes into the picture. Now, that's the reason why, even up until now, you see, God continues to deal with man in his heart. God continues to deal with man in his heart. All right, even much more now that you are a believer in Christ Jesus. You see? We've explained the fact that the first, you know, um, experience you came into, all right, of the kingdom of God, you had of the kingdom of God, all right, was in your heart, is in your heart, is in your heart. But of course, before you experience, you know, of the love of God, before you experience of the gospel of Jesus Christ, all right, your heart, regardless of that, has always been a spiritual center. You see? A spiritual center. The heart of man, saved or unsaved, 
all right, is a spiritual force or a spiritual environment, all right, from whence or within where, you know, um, conception takes place, all right? Also where, you know, um, life is brought forth, the heart. Glory to Jesus. All right. Um, I'm sorry about that. Um, I, from this end, was just considering the time again. Um, we're already two hours plus in this session. Um, all right. We, we're going to be, you know, I'll just, sorry, trying to rub minds with um, um, our brother here. Um, all right, so we'll just, um, we'll, we'll, we'll bring this session to a close now so that we don't want to stretch too much, too long, you know. Um, so what I'm thinking we're going to do is, um, we're going to have another session during the upcoming, this coming week. We're going to have another session, but we'll let us know. So just, um, 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 check your mail. All right, we're going to have another session either one of the days during the week or next Saturday again. All right, but we're going to let you know via mail. All right, we're going to know, let you know via mail. As a matter of fact, um, uh, our brother, bro Jimba, who helps us with our you know media, whatever is here, so um, we're going to reach out to us via mail via mail, you know, like we did let us know about this meeting in the first place. All right, we don't want to just let it stretch and, you know, but in the next session, we will be embracing the package directly, all right? We'll be em embracing the package directly, you know, um, you know, the heart, you know, heart capital, heart attitude, then first to fourth, you know, dimensional operations. All right, so um, thank you for your patience. Thank you for your participation. Grace to you. Grace be multiplied to you. Thank you, Pastor. Thank you, sir. Thank you, Pastor. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. Glory, glory to God.